Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Hey, hey, hey. Happy 4th of July, everybody. USA! 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 And, USA! and, and we're spending it with you. Yes. Right when the little... sun goes down, <laughs> and right gonna... when all the bombs you know, start the going fireworks off. fireworks are going off. We are here talking to you about week and a half old video game news. You know what? I was I, I would have called it off, but we didn't do it last week. No. And we also skipped another week. Yes, and we're going to so, skip, an, well, I'm going to be away in like three weeks again. Although I'll be in my, our right. parents' place, so I could just That's a good point. zoom in if I have to. We'll figure it out. Yes, I got to start, start planning things ahead <laughs> instead of just dipping. Yeah. But anyway, hello. Hello. We're, 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 we're here with you on this wonderful 4th of July. Yes. Uh, to also, celebrate, I have four... <laughs> Fourth of July themed cupcakes left from the Walmart in Cynthiana, Kentucky, where oh I was. My God. Week. I ate most of them. They expired today, so I figured we'll have uh we'll just finish them through. Okay. I mean I'll gladly <laughs> I know. I'll gladly eat the rest of those. Razzle Jazzle, thanks for the subscription. Uh I got a mute alerts because we're doing a podcast. Yeah. Also, our dad's in the chat. Hope hey, your Bill. fourth of July podcast isn't a dud tonight. Get it? Uh it's a that's a firework joke. Happy birthday, USA. Go Mets. Yeah, hey, let's go Mets. <laughs> I saw that TikTok. It got suggested to me like right after you told me about it. I got it to, and I didn't know what it was. Oh no. I got tricked by it. Nice. Until the let's go Mets baby. Uh, that's the Chinese for you. They're always listening. What oh, TikTok. Yeah. I was like, what was Chinese about that? <laughs> oh God. But enough about the Chinese. It's America, baby. It's America, baby. Woo! Uh, bang 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 uh we got a lot of things to talk about today we're gonna talk extensively about everybody's favorite topic here on the wolf den podcast the activision microsoft microsoft FTC merger. situation yeah. because listen a lot of stuff happens so, yeah so while we like, were away and it like a lot of big news and reveals came out during we, the ftc hearing we got a lot of insight yeah about the inner workings and some secrets and some things yeah. that are coming out and stuff uh anyway hello everybody thanks for being here for the live if you noticed uh i have fantavision here on this on this little tv here because uh fireworks game <laughs> fireworks game i wanted a fireworks game there yeah. it is. anyway um before we talk about the ftc stuff we gotta thank cal ember for giving us 100 bits but also uh there's some games you can get right now yes uh it's july now it's fourth of july america baby america but, baby uh if you are subscribed to either playstation plus xbox live gold or switch online plus expansion pack you get games this month so let's talk about those games switch online expansion pass pack yeah because you got genesis games oh shit yes so starting as always with playstation plus um for the uh for the month of July, starting today, America Day, baby. Oh yeah. Uh, you get Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, okay. the most American game. So I have this game yeah. only because uh I needed stuff to play on PlayStation 5 and right. Xbox when it came out. And this used the adaptive triggers. Okay. That's the only reason I got this. Game. Uh I should note this is the cross gen bundle, so it's uh PS4 and PS5. Not a not a good I don't like this one. I'd imagine it's not that much better or different than... You know, the Call of Duties are... There's a surprising difference between the different developers of the Call of Duty games. Yeah. You know uh, you know how they like every other Call of Duty is like, this is a Treyarch one, this is an Infinity Reward Sledgehammer. one. Sledgehammer, there, yeah, yeah. There's a pretty substantial difference between them. Uh, I, I, I didn't do... This one didn't do it for me. I feel like... Well, I haven't played a Call of Duty game. There's a big gap of me playing Call of Duty games... And back, you know, during the 360 era, like I could tell the difference between an Infinity War one and a Treyarch one. Right now, they've just become so homogenized. I like, I don't really know the difference between a Sledgehammer one, and it's just the setting. Like that's what's differentiated yeah. for me. Otherwise, it's the same game. It, it it really it's just Warzone made it so. If if, if it feels different than Warzone, yeah, I something feels off to me. Right, right. Well, it's because I put okay. so many hours into that. Um. A good game, though, 
Alan Wake remastered for PS4 and PS5. That's a huge deal. Yes. That's a very big deal. It's a very big deal. It's a very good game. Uh, originally a 360 exclusive, uh, now available for everything and free if you have PlayStation Plus. So uh, play it. So so, so uh, we got one more game. Yes. And Endling. Endling, Extinction is Forever, PS4 and PS5. Oh, is this the one you're a fox and you have to take care of your kids? Oh, that sounds cool. That sounds sad as hell. Yeah. In case, in case you want to take a break from taking care of your kids. Yeah. Take you care can be of- a fox. It's a, in case you want to take a break being a wolf taking care of your kids, <laughs> you can be a fox taking care of your yes. kids. Just what I want to do. It's like how truck drivers on their off time, they will play <laughs> truck simulators. Yeah. yeah. Uh. Um. Anyway, I've been kind of dabbling with the PlayStation Plus premium streaming. Okay. Will this be streaming? I doubt it. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I can always just remote play yeah. from my actual PlayStation 5. <coughs> God bless. Thank you, America. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know if this will be cloud. Um, it's it's PS Plus essential. So that typically just means um, download the game. Right. So I don't know if that means, you know, cloud on the premium tier, you know? I don't think so. Because they're, they're still not very clear on that yeah no it's very confusing as of right as best of my knowledge as of right now playstation plus premium the cloud gaming stuff is just streaming retro games no there are uh there are some yeah i played steep and you know what uh i liked it for like the 10 minutes that i played and then i tried playing it again and i didn't like it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> i really well, liked it for a hot minute and then i tried again and i was like never mind okay but like if you own steep and you want to stream it like you'd have to play the version in their library, not your version of Steep, I think. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if your save file will pull from the cloud. Right. Um, but y- Oh, I'm having a stroke. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, they don't make it clear. Actually, I had a save file conflict. Wait, it's all come back to me. <laughs> I bought well, I didn't buy. Okay, so Stray was part of PlayStation Plus. Yes. Right? Yes. When it came out. I downloaded it from that and played it. And I have a save file that's on the cloud. Right. But I had the PlayStation 5 version. Okay. And streaming is the PlayStation 4 version. Uh... Is there a difference? No. It's <laughs> like, no. I think there might be a resolution difference. But it's Stray. It's not really graphically impressive. I know, but I remember, I think it was Marvel's Avengers when that game came out. And people wanted to transfer their saves over. And there was such some cockamamie way yeah. to like transfer the save over. Like they they did not do a good job of making the transition from last gen to next gen seamless. Right. They still treated it like going from a PlayStation 1 to a place. No, not even from a PlayStation 2 to a PlayStation 3. Like completely separate things. So my stray save did not work on the streaming PlayStation Plus Premium. Right. Because that was the PlayStation 4 version. Right very annoying yeah so i i think it will try to pull your save file if it's available but if it's a system conflict like that four to five uh it, you're gonna have problems yeah oh god i love talking about online services yes. especially playstations <laughs> um oh games catalog so anyway what was i trying to say uh I would play Alan Wake if it was part of the streaming subscription because then I could play it on my handheld. Right. Play it on a handheld. Well, you can always remote play it. Yeah. But that, and we know that's a pain in the butt too. I might have to do that. See, that's the, so my, (laughs) this this is very, I got a lot of picadillos. Okay. I got my ROG ally on my nightstand. Right. And I've been dabbling with that. Okay. So now, if I want to remote play to my, because you can't use the controller on the Ally with remote play, as far as I know, unless I get a third party app. Right. So I'm going to have to break out my backbone controller and an Android phone. Yeah. To play remote play my PlayStation 5. Yes. Which, you know, I'm going to have to do anyway because I want to play Ground Zeroes again. Okay. So. I, my nightstand is going to be filled with freaking <laughs> Does your nightstand have drawers? Because you're going to need drawers. It has a drawer. A drawer. No, you got to get more drawers. It has a drawer, and then it has like a big empty space. You got to get a drawer for the Ally, a drawer for the uh, Android phone, a drawer for the Switch, a drawer for the Steam And deck. they're all wireless charging. Yeah. Yeah, of course. 
Uh, uh, all right, so that's PlayStation. Yeah, Xbox, uh, for the whole month, you get Darkwood, and from July 16th to the 15th, you get When the Past Was Around. What the fuck? Exactly, so I'm just blowing through those. Uh, over on Switch Online on Plus you. Expansion Pack. Okay. Uh, Sega Genesis, you have four Sega Genesis games. Ghouls and Ghosts, Crusader of Senti, Landstalker, and The Revenge of Shinobi. Oh, that's the bad one. That's the decent one. Decent? Yeah. Shinobi is the bad one. Revenge of Shinobi is the decent one. And then Shinobi 3 is the, the okay. good one. The problem is Shinobi 3 is so much better than all I know. the other ones I know. that I want nothing to do with this. <laughs> but Revenge of Shinobi is still good in its own right. The problem is this is not the version that illegally uses Godzilla, Batman, and Spider-Man, and the Terminator as the end bosses. You know the story. I right? know the story, but did, does that mean they took it out? They like just basically palette swapped all of them, so they don't oh, look like. Oh, that's yeah. pretty funny. Um, but Ghouls and Ghosts is cool. It's an it's another well, not really. It's another entry in the Ghosts and Goblins series. So if you like hard games, here you go. People like that game. I don't see it, man. It is way too hard. No, I like I get it, but like the thing is, my my like prime experience of playing like I think it was Ghosts and Goblins was in an arcade with friends and we just kept pumping quarters in it and taking turns trying to get past, you know, the next spot. So like, if you got friends to play with, then that's the way to do it. You play all at once. Well, you play, you play until you die and then someone else takes over. Okay. And then that person tries to get farther. And then when they die, someone else jumps in. Okay. So it's like a, it's like Mario. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Crusader of Senti is, uh, how do I say it's Sega's answer to Zelda. It's Sega, one of two answers Sega had to Zelda. Mm -hmm. There's Beyond Oasis, and then there was this one. This one, a lot of people think, is the closer uh, analog to Zelda on Genesis. So if you like your classic Zeldas, like A Link to the Past, play this game. Uh, and Landstalker, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that game is at all. Yeah. So, but there you go. Four games for your... Oh, I know this game, Landstalker. That looks familiar. Uh, that These are great Sega yeah. Genesis games. I'm yes, glad they keep all good pumping games. out Sega yes. Genesis games. Um, I, I, I played Sonic Origins Plus last week. How was that? Because I was paid to do so. Oh. Um... <laughs> I remember when that came out like a year ago, we were kind of shitting on it, right? Because there was all this controversy around it because like the the music was, you know, the Sonic 3 music was different and it wasn't as good. Um, there was like a DLC structure that was like very anti-consumer. Um, a lot of like the super hardcore people are like the emulation is not great. From what I understand, though, the game is fine, like as is. Like, yeah, so... I, I heard that it got a lot better, like that it got updated and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, And I hear that, I, I remember like the cut scenes were bad on the Switch, yeah. but they were good on the other consoles. So I got the Steam version. Right. Um, And it's awesome. Like, yeah. like uh, there's some weird stuff like uh, Sonic 3, the songs are bad. Yeah. The, after, uh, but it, it doesn't hit until Ice Cap Zone. Yeah, because I think Ice Cap Zone. Or, or no, the casino or, or whatever it's called. The nighttime casino thing. Oh, uh, Carnival Zone. Carnival Zone. When you hit Carnival Zone, then it gets bad. Carnival Zone. Carnival Ice, Zone is horrible. Carnival Zone, Ice Cap Zone, and then Sky Base Zone. Like yeah. those are the three songs that are different. Yeah, and those they're bad. Yeah. Um. So that sucks. But widescreen is sick. Yeah. Um, uh, playing as Amy, you can play as Amy now in yes. Sonic Origins Plus. That's pretty sick. Uh, you could do a Hyper Amy. I saw that. Which That's is pretty cool, sick. Yeah. Um, it's good. And, and, uh, there is a mode where you just play through all of the games Yeah, <laughs> from, from beginning to end. Uh, and there's some changes like, uh, you have infinite lives now. Yeah. Um, that seems to be like a big sweeping thing across all the Sonic games now. Yeah. It's like getting rid of the live system. I mean, that's a modern thing. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and I understand that. That reminded me like, I've, have you been, have you seen this game only up? Where you, no. it's like a platformer and you just have to go really high. But you can fall. And if you fall, you go all the way back to the beginning. So uh, I've seen games similar to that. It's very hard. It's like Jump King. It's okay. very hard because you fall and you lose all of your progress. And like I 
I mean, I get frustrated, but not that frustrated with that because it's like, all right, that's part of the game. Okay. It's like, you know, you have to go all the way to the bottom yeah. and go up to the top. And it made me realize that's just how games were. Yeah. Back in like the 90s. Yeah. If the game, most games didn't have save saves. Yeah. And if you lost your lives, you played the whole game over again. Yeah. That's how Sonic was. Yeah. So, I mean, Sonic 3 had saves. Yeah. Um, But yeah, that's. When I, that reminded me while I was playing Sonic, I was like, oh, yeah, games used to have lives and you would die and play the whole thing over again. Yeah. Well, that was a holdover from the arcades because you had lives in the arcade. Right. And then that just transferred over to home consoles. Yeah. And most games still had it, but you had a lot of games that didn't have it. And right. they were trying, you know, the games that kept them, kept them possibly for much longer than necessary. Another cool thing about Sonic Origins that I liked is uh, in Sonic 3, you know how there's the the, the bonus stages? Yeah. And uh, if you lost the bonus stage, you'd have to find another ring. Yeah. In this, you can earn coins and you can redeem the coins to redo the bonus stage. That's and cool. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Because that's one of one of my least favorite things about the, 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 the bonus stages in Sonic 3 is you... It takes... You can you like, have to find them. You have to find them, and and for me, it usually I usually don't get supersonic until the sky base, yeah. and then it's like, what was the point? Yeah. I'm at the it, last it ta- level. It takes too long. It takes away. It breaks the flow of the game. Yeah, because you're trying to speed through the level as quickly as you can, but you know you have to stop the flow and go hunting for the chaos. Yeah, animal. you have to. Yeah, you have to find them. It's yeah, very, I like, think Sonic One probably does it the best. Beat the level with fifty rings, and you you access the special stage and Sonic two also does it very well. But if you go past the save post, the checkpoint post with 50 rings, you jump into it. Yeah. And then, yeah, that's the other thing. Uh, Sonic one has the spin dash and stuff. Yeah. So it's just, so it makes it a good, it's a good game. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Anyway, that's my rant about Sonic Wars. It's pretty good. I played, so if we're talking about games, we played before we talk about the actual news, I played uh, Metroid zero mission on vacation. Uh, it was the first time I've ever played it. Oh, yeah. I haven't played Zero yeah. Mission. I've only played uh, the other one, Fusion. It's very good. Okay. Yes. I'm like, I have said before, Metroid 1 on NES, bad game. <laughs> yeah. This Metroid Zero Mission, fantastic game. By it's today's t- standards, for sure. Yeah. It's the type of remake that shows you how good a game actually is. You know what I mean? Well, it's it's made like Fusion, right? It's made like Fusion meets Super Metroid. Yeah. Okay. This so, is going to make my mouth blue. I'm eating a cupcake. Go for it. What I like about it is it doesn't hold your hand, but it, it at least points you in the right direction better than... Because it actually like shows you where to go. Mm-hmm. And it actually makes the map useful. Whereas in Metroid, it's just like, good luck, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, and it's an NES game, so it's like impossible to yeah, figure it out. Yeah, and like you can save and stuff, and you can't, and you know, the upgrade path is clear, um, defeating enemies is clear, you know, it just, it makes the game, like there's still mystery to it, you still have to figure things out, but it makes the game possible to figure out. And I like that-, that about Fusion, like I like, I like Metroidvania type games because of just the way the game mechanics are yeah i don't like hunting around for what to do next and and backtracking i hate that but metroid fusion did a really good job of kind of holding your hand a little bit and showing you where to go and and making it obvious like oh i got this thing that clearly is to do this thing yeah um and the game's short and relatively small yeah so i'd imagine a lot of that carried over to it did yeah uh, it's there's no like they didn't add like uh, you know big story beats. They added like a cutscene here or there, and they're pretty cool. But they don't stop it for a wall of text like they do in Fusion, which I think okay. is good. Yeah, that's good. I was talking to somebody who was playing through Fusion, and it made me want to play it again because the game is only three hours. Fusion. Yeah, well, that's if you know what you're doing. I I remember when no. we first started playing that game, it was like six. Or something. Well, it took me like weeks because yeah. I was on and off playing it because I kept getting frustrated because yeah. I had to backtrack. But I didn't really look up much. I just kind of figured it out. Yeah. Um, But no, I'm pretty sure like it's like four if you just, you know, I guess if you know what you're doing. Yeah. If, if, you, if you like look shit up and stuff. But but it's short. That's my point. Yeah. It's, it's a very short game. And I think that's why it speed runs so much. Yeah, I think that's why it it, it, it did. So well, yeah. Good also, at games too, so like quick. with Metroid games, people try to like sequence break and try to get to, you know, their goal, the goal faster mm-hmm. or before they're supposed to. So. Right. 
Uh, let's go right to the Activision uh, Xbox stuff. Yes. Uh, we're, we're a little out of order here. Yeah, the the whole notes is like all fakakted from okay. you know the week off. And What's stuff. the first one we should do then? Uh, well, what do you what do you think? Should we just go uh in day order and start with day? Yeah, one let's and... go in day order. All right. I remember there being a very specific piece of information that like blew my mind, and okay. somebody sent it to me, and I forgot it now. Okay, so I'll I'll recap day one and I'll talk about all the, I'll talk about like the main thing. We're going off of by Jan's recap. Act like everyone's dumb here. Okay, what is this? What is this? Okay. What happened? So the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, which is a U.S. based agency, USA, <laughs> um, they are they basically sued to stop or at least pause the. Activision, no, the Microsoft acquisition of Activision Blizzard. Yes, and these, which, which was the seventy billion dollar company acquisition that uh, was announced last year. Yes, yeah. Um, so basically, what they're what they're doing is they're trying to figure out why does Microsoft want to buy the largest third party developer in the in the world? Is this going to create a unfair monopoly? How does this, you know, give Microsoft an advantage over? you know sony their biggest competition and other video game platforms and stuff so uh day one the first day of the xbox ftc trial was very eventful with a look into how exclusive call of duty marketing deals impacted xbox i don't know if i have this article that you're reading off of. it's um it's towards the bottom of the keep it's called ftc microsoft hearings oh i didn't see any of this <laughs> there's a big gap yeah like i said it's Holy all it's hell. all messed up okay okay can, you you may you may continue. Okay. Uh, console exclusivity discussions surrounding machine games, upcoming Indiana Jones project, and emails revealing PlayStation boss Jim Ryan's thoughts on the potential acquisition. Wait, Indiana Jones game? Forgot yeah. about that. Yes, kind of a big deal. Kind of a big deal. You like Indiana Jones? I do. I would like to know more about that. Okay. So I'll go through the bullet points, and if you want to know more, uh, we'll click on the article and I'll read more. Okay. Okay. So one. Microsoft claims Bobby Kotick demanded bigger revenue share to put Call of Duty on Xbox. Inarguably the craziest revelation of day one, Microsoft claimed that Activision almost denied, oh, sorry, almost decided not to put Call of Duty on Xbox unless Microsoft gave Activision a greater revenue share. Xbox's Sarah Bond also detailed the limits on Xbox's marketing of Call of Duty during Activision's exclusive marketing deal with Sony. That's... Weird. Microsoft want Activision wanted a lot more money from Microsoft to put Xbox to, to even put Call of Duty on there. Yes. So every console generation, it's different, especially for Call of Duty. Yeah. They bounced between. Well, there's there's what's called a lead console. Yeah. And that's the console that gets you know the big marketing push. Yeah. And in a roundabout way causes the game to be synonymous with said console. A lot of times, if you notice, you watch a Call of Duty trailer, at the end it's the PlayStation bumper. That means that Sony is getting the marketing push because they're trying to associate Call of Duty with Sony specifically. Yeah. And I remember during the Xbox 360 days, it, it, yeah. it, it was Xbox 360. Call of Duty had a big push with that, and a lot of other games did. But uh, you would get like exclusive content. or Yeah, you get stuff first. Yeah, the map packs would release that was first the big one, yeah. for xbox 360 mm -hmm. uh other games would get uh i mean this was back in the day when if you bought a game physically and knew it would come with uh a, a key inside of it that would give you like a gun or something yeah. uh an in-game item and uh a lot of times during the xbox 360 days the xbox 360 would get that item and playstation would not yes uh so these days playstation has been crushing xbox uh, mm -hmm. in terms of console sales so we'll the lead that. console is playstation mm -hmm. so which call of duty did they want more money for um so, so activision had a deal with sony yeah for uh, for for, well, for promotion like yeah if you'd see a commercial for call of duty it would say play it on playstation yeah. even though you could play it anywhere and, you well want. it had to deal with sony to be the lead console mm -hmm. but according to this news they weren't going to put it on xbox at all Unless right. they got a bigger uh, revenue share from Xbox. That's crazy. I don't think it's specified which Call of Duty. Um, it might have just been at the start of the 
360, not the 360, the uh, Xbox One era. Okay. Oh, Vanguard. It was Vanguard. Oh, okay. Yeah. Weird. Okay. I okay. would not have given a shit if if, if Vanguard <laughs> didn't come to Xbox. They'd be like, okay, I guess I'm not playing Vanguard. Yeah. Uh, next, Machine Games Indiana Jones was originally planned for release on PS5. In one of the biggest reveals of the trial so far, uh, Disney initially had a deal with Bethesda's Machine Works Games to create a multi-platform AAA Indiana Jones game. After Xbox acquired ZeniMax, however, the parties amended the deal to turn the project into an Xbox and PC exclusive. I never knew this was an Xbox and PC exclusive. They, that's the thing. They never said. Oh. All, all, we, knew, all we knew was that uh, Machine Games and Bethesda and, and Todd Howard specifically were working on an Indiana Jones game with Lucasfilm. Mm -hmm. That's all we knew. And then Microsoft, I think it was, I think this was right before Microsoft bought Bethesda and ZeniMax. So we didn't know what this game was going to be, or like who it was going to be for. This hearing basically just confirmed <laughs> that it's an Xbox and PC exclusive. That's insane. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So, so that, that's, I mean, a lot of the stuff that we've been learning from this hearing is like, uh, I think there was one of the big drops was I think Microsoft basically said when the next Nintendo console is coming up and it's like, <laughs> all right, Microsoft probably doesn't know when the next yeah. console is coming out. This is them speculating so that they can prepare. Right. Just like we would. Yeah. You know, um, in this case, however, this is a fact that happens. This is. Yeah. going to happen yeah. this is uh this is leaked information yes. that our government just leaked for us uh there's there's more on on this okay. specific topic but we'll get to it because it's in one of the later days okay um next uh pete hines starfield would wouldn't be out in nine weeks if it was releasing on playstation 5 but that's this pete hines said xbox exclusivity has streamlined development somewhat allowing for more rounds of quality assurance However, Hines also indicated he felt blindsided by Xbox's comments to make Call of Duty multi-platform, wondering why the same couldn't be done for games like Starfield. This game's out in nine weeks? Yes. Oh my god. Um, so I don't... Also, um, uh, again, it's not going to be out in nine weeks. There's no way. <laughs> well, I, Absolutely I, I no mean, way. it better be out in nine weeks because it was delayed a bunch of times. It'll be delayed again. There's no so? way this game's coming out. I, I think it, I think it's coming out. Uh, but yeah, they... Uh, during the, during today's trial with, uh, between Microsoft Activision and the FTC, Hines was asked about developing games like Redfall and Starfield as Xbox console exclusives. Hines said developers can... Can hold more rounds of quality assurance testing when a game is on fewer platforms, which he called less of a risk than developing for multi for many platforms. Hines also spoke on Starfield, saying it wouldn't miss its September date if it was a multi a platform title. Sorry, it wouldn't hit its multi platform. It wouldn't hit its September date if it was a multi platform di uh, title. We would not be putting Starfield out in nine weeks if we were supporting an entire additional platform, in my opinion. Hines said. So basically, they're saying, you know, being a, an exclusive console manufacturer of uh, allows them to put more focus on the task at hand rather than making sure it works for console A, console B, and console C. If they just work on console A, they can get they can actually get the game out. If this game were to actually come to PlayStation, in addition to Xbox and PC, we would still be waiting for it. Yeah, we're still gonna be waiting. It's not coming. There's no <laughs> way it's coming out. Uh, I just want to check one thing. One second. Uh, Microsoft admits Xbox has lost the console. Well, oh, wait. God. Okay, I don't want to go too. I'm jumping wait. too far ahead here. I'm, I'm, I'm getting gonna too excited. Wait, wait. I want to just delete one article because it's that one article from the Keep because it's actually addressed in this one we're talking about right now, and this is, I think, a big one. Uh, that being said. Pete Hines also implied that he was blindsided by Xbox's commitments to bring Activision games like Call of Duty to PlayStation and other platforms, while Bethesda games remain strictly Xbox exclusive. Hines said in a messaging surrounding Call of Duty confusing, confused him since it was the opposite of what we were just asked or told to do with our other titles. 
Uh, Hines said no one at Xbox gave Bethesda a heads up about the Call of Duty decision and that he thought Phil Spencer would explain in an interview why the multi-platform approach is acceptable for Activision games like Call of Duty, but not Bethesda games like Starfield or The Elder Scrolls VI. I mean, it's obvious. It's 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 because it's because they're getting sued by the FTC, right? <laughs> and 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 nobody gives a shit about about Starfield and and, well, and Elder Scrolls. I no no that's not true because Skyrim was a phenomenon. No no we care, but the FTC is only gonna make a big stink about Call of Duty. Okay, you think that, so? I think I think. I think Skyrim is a huge phenomenon, but it's still too niche for these old people in the FTC to get Well, if care they about. if they hear, I mean, I think Skyrim is big enough. Like my wife knows what Skyrim is. She doesn't mm. fucking play video games. So, like if you hear, like if you hear this is the sequel to Skyrim, mm. that could, you know, raise some bells cuz Skyrim know. is a known thing. Think more like our parents. Mm. Cuz that's the people who are running this That's bitch, true, you know? Yeah. They know what Call of Duty is. Yeah. They know it's a big deal. They know what Fortnite is. Yeah. Skyrim, they're gonna be like was some nerd shit. Yeah, yeah. some nerd shit. Is that a sex position? But still, the point remains. Uh, and there was actually an e- like Pete Hines actually sent down an email to Zenimax as a whole, being like, "What's up with this? Why? Yeah. Why can't we put out? Because it does like cut. I would out, be like, pissed. It cuts out a whole revenue stream. Yeah, not putting the game out on. Yeah, it makes it easier to develop for, but you're still losing an entire market. You're uh- losing. A bigger market. I would be pissed if I had a yeah. game and I was ready to launch, not ready to launch, but I was developing it. And then all of a sudden they're like, by the way, this is only coming to Xbox. Yeah. I, would, I would be a little upset about that. You have plans and now you have to change the plan. Yeah. Uh, f- next. Microsoft admits Xbox has lost the console wars. Microsoft has claimed Xbox has officially lost the console wars, arguing that it's consistently been in third place behind Sony and Nintendo in market share since the original Xbox launch over 20 years ago. This is something that um, Phil Spencer has brought up many times in interviews surrounding this acquisition yeah. and talking about, you know, to the various government agencies around the world, you know, how this isn't going to put Microsoft at an advantage in the cons- in the video game space because they are already in last place. And we have brought up on this podcast, or at least I have, that that is not entirely true. Yeah. They they have lost the Xbox One generation, yes, and Phil Spencer said that was the worst one to lose, but they were in distant second during the original Xbox era, and they were in you know they were tied for second during the PS3 and Wii era. I think that Microsoft lost the console wars, traditional console wars, but I think that the wars have changed so much yes. that it's it's very unclear who's on top, who's on bottom. I think they all kind of splintered off and started doing their own thing. I think in terms of like raw sales data, fireworks, fireworks, fireworks are getting Zim's crazy. Zim's going to lose his mind. <laughs> Zim tries to fight him. I, that doesn't Other dogs me. get scared. Zim goes for him. I think in terms of raw sales data, yes, Microsoft has not sold as many Xboxes as Sony or Nintendo has these this past generation. But I think in terms of overall, uh, like the entire history of Xbox, they're not, you know, they're not the big losers that you know they are making themselves yeah. out to be. Yeah. Okay. They're well. They ha- they're trying to. They're make trying to look make like themselves out. Yeah. But you know. They're not the Mets. <laughs> They're not the Mets. I'm sorry. Uh, Wood, hello. Wood hey, says Wood. happy fourth. Wood, uh, we almost stopped, you know, had to sleep over your house because we were stuck in Pennsylvania coming home. <laughs> and my wife's like, where are we going to spend the night? Where does Wood live? I know he lives in Pennsylvania. He's got a room. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Sony's Jim Ryan said he was pretty sure we will continue to see Call of Duty on PlayStation for many years to come. PlayStation boss Jim Ryan wrote in an email. I'm pretty sure we will continue to see Call of Duty on PlayStation for many years to come. In response to the news that Microsoft intended to buy Activision Blizzard, Ryan also said the acquisition wasn't an exclusivity play at all, which is a big contrast to Sony's public-facing messaging over the last year. Don't these idiots know that they can't be sending emails like that? (laughs) If they're going to be testifying in court... One thing, they can't send an email the complete opposite thing. Imagine that. 
imagine like being the head of playstation saying on an email like don't worry guys let sony uh sony's still gonna get a call of duty we're fine and then going on camera going man fuck microsoft yeah. and all that. what the hell that's insane like like look look i understand he wants to you know protect his company and like the rationale behind stopping this acquisition you know because theoretically yes this could negatively impact sony systems going forward yeah but you know maybe don't put in an email then that you'll be fine <laughs> yeah no it's it's very strange it's, it's a very yeah. strange yeah uh uh thing to admit yeah uh, well well i don't know i don't know I, I, I maybe this was an email prior to this whole uh uh court case maybe mm-hmm. they weren't anticipating a court case maybe this was like right when the uh deal was starting maybe uh, does it say when? And then he wasn't briefed by the lawyers to keep his mouth shut. Uh, the email viewed by IGN reporter Rebecca Valentine in court today and dated January 20th, 2022, two days after Microsoft announced its intent to purchase Activision Blizzard, that makes reveals that sense. Ryan relaxed his attitude to the deal at the time. Okay. So initially he was like, nah, we're cool. No, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, though, that that it was right when the news broke because he had to tell the company like, "Hey, yeah, relax, everything's gonna be fine." Um, but now we have all of this go- going up. I mean, you can also, if you're Jim Ryan, you can also argue like, "I said that because I thought everything was gonna be fine," but then after other things like Starfield go- yeah. going exclusive, I started to get concerned, and that's why we're here doing this court case. Yeah, so that. I think you could easily argue around. Yeah. Well, we'll go back. We'll talk about the Starfield thing in a minute. Okay. Uh, if Microsoft expects the next generation of consoles to come out in 2028. This is the this is the thing. Yeah. That in court great. documents revealed ahead of this morning's trial, we learned that Microsoft expects the next console generation to begin in 2028. That means the PlayStation 6 and next Xbox would come out around eight years after this current generation began. Boom. Uh, that's a long time. That is. A- and it makes sense, though, because this console generation seems like it's gonna be drawn out. Yeah. I think this, I mean, this console generation, we're seeing less games than usual. We're seeing a lot of, like, whole, like holding pattern games. It's a lot of remakes. It's a lot of ports and HD uh, remasters and stuff. Uh, games are taking longer to develop for. Yeah. Um, so the hardware is taking longer to get out and be in a place that, uh, works. Yeah. Um, I think the hard, yeah, the hardware we've talked about, the hardware is too advanced for the games and how the televisions we have now, the, the, the specs are too advanced, but the, the, the quality of, of the, of the hardware that they're putting out is, is suffering yeah. because of the supply chain issues and because there's so much demand for it um, and because the, everything's so expensive and all this technology is new and like you said, the TVs can't support it. And, uh, there's a lot of weird incompatibilities and there's a lot of like faulty hardware and stuff. Yeah. Um, so it's been a lot tougher. So so I, I think we're at a point, we, we've been reaching a point what what's what's the law where uh technology Moore's law Moore's law where it doubles every every yeah. year or something uh that stopped happening yeah that's not a thing anymore mm-hmm. uh because the software can't keep up with the crazy yeah. hardware that that we have um and yeah we're we're getting slower and slower it's getting slower and slower and and it makes sense that 2028 would would be the next uh console generation but i think they said switch would be a lot sooner uh, because the thing, the weird thing is that the switch is technically last gen. Yes. Uh, they don't, m- this article doesn't mention switch because they did specifically mention switch in one of these. Right. You guys hear that? Can you yeah, guys hear the, you, the, the, you, the booms? Can you hear the freedom ringing? <laughs> it's going to, it's going to be going on for a while. <laughs> okay. Uh, Xbox's Matt booty says decision. <laughs> <laughs> forgot, forgot about him. <laughs> Forgot about this guy. Uh, he said that a uh, decision has not been made on Outer Worlds 2 PlayStation release. Since acquiring ZeniMax, Xbox has turned multiple games into console exclusives, including Redfall and Starfield. But, but Xbox's Matt Booty said 
A final decision has not been made regarding exclusivity over Obsidian's Outer Worlds 2. So remember, before Obsidian was purchased by Microsoft, they released the Outer Worlds multi-platform. Mm -hmm. And now they're saying, you know, they still don't know if they're going to do that with Outer Worlds 2. Okay. Outer Worlds 2 might go multi-platform. Oh. Which is interesting because why is ZeniMax's games console exclusive but not Obsidian's? Yeah, it it's because of how high profile Bethesda's games are. Yeah. That that Microsoft's like we need an exclusive and it's yeah. going to be your game. Uh but that's the whole reason this court case exists is because the FTC is proving hey, you are benefiting too much by this acquisition by yeah. by making these exclusive. Which seems crazy cuz it's like why is Microsoft being uh reprimanded when Sony has so many exclusives? Yeah. You know? It's just such a bizarre... Well, I think, you know, Microsoft's being reprimanded because Sony didn't take exclusives off the market. Right. They, 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 they're they acquiring these. Sony built them from the, from the exactly. ground. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and the final thing for day one, Sarah Bond uh, said that Xbox Cloud is Game Pass's least popular feature. Bond revealed that gamers primarily use xCloud gaming on consoles, saying that it's the least popular feature included in Game Pass Ultimate. Yeah, I guess the most popular feature is day one games. Day one just, game releases. I would just the game library in general. You know, because yeah. because not all games uh, support cloud streaming. But, but I mean, cloud streaming is still a great value from oh game yeah pass. no it is so i i think that that but if, if people are primarily it. using game pass on console there's really no need to stream the games from the cloud because then you can just download it straight to your console yeah yeah no yeah, yeah, yeah. that makes sense so. but but i think that they know and we know that that will eventually become a very popular feature of game pass yeah the streaming okay so now we're on to day two no, that was all day one. That was day one. <laughs> oh my God. How long do these court... I think this was like four like... days. No, I mean like a day. It's like an eight-hour day, yeah. right? They break yeah, it's, a full, lunch. it's a full day. Mm -hmm. uh, day two, Phil Spencer takes the stand. So this is a whole other article now? No, it's the same way. Scroll up. Okay. Yeah. Phil Spencer takes the stand. Day two. All right. Xbox boss Phil Spencer tells Judge, I will do whatever it takes to keep Call of Duty on PlayStation. Immediately after Judge Jacqueline Scott Corley uh, reminded Spencer he was under oath, he said, I would raise my hand. I will do whatever it takes. We have no plan. I'm making a commitment standing here that we will not pull Call of Duty. It is my testimony from PlayStation. Okay. okay. Like, the thing is, though, that Sony has been very, uh, what's the word? They haven't been team players in the past right they've been very hard to work with in the past uh, crossing Cross the yeah the borders you know they, they've crossing the line that they've they've been very hard to work with uh they're the reason why multi-platform play didn't happen for years yeah um now it's like normal when you when you get a multiplayer game you're like well, of course i'm going to be able to play with my friends on xbox that didn't happen to like what 2018. Something Remember like we were that, yeah. at E3 yeah. in the hotel room, and I was like, "Holy shit! You mean Fortnite? You can play on any platform? That's amazing!" And yeah. then like the next week, it was just normal to be yeah. able to do that. Uh, but Sony was the holdout. Sony didn't want uh, yeah. uh, you to play Fortnite with your Xbox friends, and Fortnite was like, "It's Sony, fuck them." Yeah. And uh, so Phil Spencer being like, "We'll do whatever it takes to get Call of Duty on PlayStation." He could be legally bound by that statement, yeah. and PlayStation could still be. They could have really like unreasonable requests. Yeah, but he, you know, he's under oath, and he has to now do it because otherwise, that's perjury. Yeah, so that's uh, that's very bizarre to me. Yeah. Uh, next, Phil Spencer confirms Starfield was potentially going to skip Xbox prior to the Zenimax acquisition. The Xbox boss revealed that there were. Uh, that there were fears within Microsoft that Starfield was going to be a PlayStation exclusive following exclusivity arrangements for Ghostwire Tokyo and Deathloop. That all changed after Microsoft bought ZeniMax and Bethesda. So you remember when Deathloop and Ghostwire Tokyo came out, they were Sony exclusives for a year? Yes. And then they went to Xbox? Yes. The same thing was 
Microsoft's fear was the same thing was going to happen with Starfield and possibly not even come to Xbox at all. That's a re- that's a reasonable fear after yeah. Deathloop. That, that yeah. makes a lot of sense. Yeah, that's I think that's reasonable. Yeah, and that's why they're like, oh, shit, we gotta buy. Just buy. We yeah. gotta spend seventy how, billion dollars. How do we stop this? Let's we'll just buy yeah. the company. Uh, Elder Scrolls Six is still five plus years away. A PlayStation version undecided. Bethesda's Skyrim sequel is still five plus years away, and Spencer said that platforms haven't been decided yet. We don't know if the game will be Xbox exclusive or if it will even uh, release during this console generation. Yeah, that was another big deal. Yeah, drop was that Skyrim's going to be a long time, but like we kind of guessed that because yeah. they're working on Starfield and they're going to be working on Starfield. For like up to a year after it launches. Yeah. So uh, Activision tells employees that the FTC claims are factually weak and legally a stretch. And a message to Activision employees viewed by IGN, Activision Blizzard communications officer Lulu Mazervi uh, called the FTC's argument factually weak. Um, She's an insane person. Yes. She <laughs> just like goes off on like people who are against the acquisition entirely. Yes. Um, and she's... Yes, she is insane. <laughs> yeah, she's, she seems crazy. Uh, Microsoft doesn't have a PlayStation 5 version. Sorry, Minecraft does not have a PlayStation 5 version because Sony didn't send Microsoft dev kits. Spencer was asked why there was no native version of Minecraft on PlayStation 5, and he said Sony was reluctant to send PS5 dev kits uh, long ahead of the console's launch in 2020. So... I mean, you can get Minecraft on PlayStation, right? Is it just a PS4 version? It's the PS4 version. Wow. There's no PS5 version of Minecraft because they won't give dev kits to Microsoft. You know, that seems reasonable, though. Does it, though? Why would you give a dev kit to your direct console competitor? Sony has an Xbox dev kit because mm-hmm. they publish MLB The Show yeah. on Xbox. And also keep in mind, Sony owns Bethesda. Sorry, Sony owns Bungie, who Mm -hmm. has Xbox dev kits. That's true. Yeah. Okay. Well, yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, Sony... Sony's basically saying, like, we don't give a shit about Minecraft. (laughs) Yeah. Which is insane. We want to keep our secrets. uh, And if we're shooting ourselves in the foot by not getting Minecraft on PS5, so be it. Yeah. And like Bungie's like, no, we want to be on Xbox. So yeah, that's why you got Microsoft dev kits. But you would think about it at this point. Yeah, you know, but after the PS5 launches, like give them dev kits. Yeah. Like it's already out. Well, who so, cares? Uh, this was not in the IGN article, but I do have this in the keep. Not only do not only is Sony not giving them PS5 dev kits, but uh, Sony says it won't share PS6 details with a Microsoft-owned Activision. You did, uh, yeah, you did have an article. Yeah. Uh, PlayStation boss Jim Ryan said that Sony would no longer be able to share details uh, of its upcoming console hardware with Call of Duty maker Activision if Microsoft's proposed a buyout was approved by regulators. Speaking to the FTC, which is currently involved in legal proceedings to block the deal, uh, Jim Ryan said Sony simply could not run the risk of a company that was owned by a direct competitor having access to that information. Ryan's uh, comments date from April of this year when the FTC questioned the PlayStation CEO on statements submitted by Sony designed to give its perspective on the deal. Chief among those was its worry by Sony that its game development processes would be interpreted as it could no sorry, it could be interrupted as it could no longer share confidential details about its next console in development. You know, that makes a lot of sense, and I completely understand their concern there. And, and that seems like a pretty reasonable argument for why Call of Duty being owned by Microsoft is bad. Right. Because um, it's the arguably the biggest multi-platform game. Yes. Uh, and it's important to have that at launch with the new console. But in order for it to be at launch on the new console, they right. need to yeah. share the important secret details of their new console. And yeah. They're going to be directly showing those secret details to their competitor. And the competitor does not have to share the same details back. Yes. So that is the first time <laughs> in this months long debate that I've heard a reasonable reason why it would be bad yeah. for Microsoft to have Call of Duty. And and 
share Call of Duty. Yeah, because yeah. like they can look at the you know the PlayStation Six specs and be like, oh, they only have sixteen gigs of RAM. Well, I think we can squeeze in thirty two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They can. They could just fuck them immediately. Yeah. Um, obviously, it would be bad if Microsoft had Call of Duty and did not share Call of Duty. if they kept it exclusive. Right, that would be obviously bad. Yeah, uh, for Sony, but uh, this is worse even if they do share Call of Duty. Yeah. Uh, okay, back to the main article. Last thing for day two. Phil Spencer confirms Microsoft tried to buy Zenga before Take Two did. Uh, Grand Theft Auto parent company Take Two Interactive bought mobile game giant Zenga in 2022, but Spencer revealed Microsoft strongly considered acquiring the company before turning its attention to Activision. They want. Phil Spencer has said. What's Zenga doing these days? That's a good question. Zenga was so massive. Yeah. And then I thought that they kind of got smaller. I don't, I, you know, I honestly don't know. I, Phil Spencer throughout this whole thing said the re- reason why they're buying Activision Blizzard is because of King, their mobile division. Because yeah. they want a foothold in mobile. And that's why Take-Two bought Zenga, because they want a, a stronger foothold in mobile. You have all these companies like coming around saying, like, we need, in the year of our lore, 2022-2023, like, we need to start focusing more attention on mobile games. Which is shocking to me, because I thought, you know, everybody was over that. Farmville 3. There you go. Is what Zenga's working on. Harry Potter Puzzles and Spells. Game of Thrones Slots Casino. Mm. Which is an iPad game. Words with Friends 2. <laughs> Zenga Poker CSR 2. I don't know what they're up to. I mean, these must be huge games that we just yeah. don't realize. Okay. Day three, Jim Ryan's video deposition. Oh, boy. Uh, Xbox FTC trial day three. What was in Jim Ryan's missing email? And, and this is interesting because this video deposition was going on yeah. while Jim Ryan was in Japan hanging out with Kojima. Yeah. They were like posting pictures and stuff. <laughs> uh, Ryan was asked repeatedly during his deposition about a specific email. He's, uh, w- Sorry. Let me start over. Ryan was asked repeatedly during this deposition about a specific email he was sent by Phil Spencer in August of 2022 that supposedly changed his mind on Xbox's acquisition of Activision, taking him from feeling frustrated but resigned to fully against the transaction and convinced it and convinced it was anti-competitive. Per Ryan, it was it set alarm bells ringing. What was in the email? So there's some email floating around in the ether between Jim Ryan and Phil Spencer that changed Jim Ryan from we're going to be okay to we have to stop this. So do we learn what's in the email? We don't know. We don't know what this email is. It's a, it's a missing. And what? he didn't, he didn't say what was in the email. That seems like that would be important. Yeah. To, <laughs> to ask, to I'll follow up and figure yeah. it out. So, yeah. Uh, next, Jim Ryan. Uh, many publishers believe Xbox Game Pass is value destructive. During his testimony, Ryan said, I talked to all the publishers and they unanimously do not like Game Pass because it is value destructive. He also claimed that Game Pass is unprofitable for Microsoft. When reached for comment, Xbox pointed to an Xbox Wire post that says every Game Pass title announced at this year's Game Pass Showcase is coming from a creator that's previously worked with the subscription service. Oh, so they're saying like they have a good retention rate. Like people who have worked with Game Pass are happy and they are willing to come back. back. Yes. But we've also heard this argument before too, that it's not profitable, that uh, companies are potentially losing sales when a game goes on Game Pass and therefore losing profit. Yeah. Well, so, we, we've explained this before. It's it's a gamble. Like, yeah. you don't know, as a publisher, you're not sure if your game is going to make more than it would have Yeah, if it's on Game Pass or if it's not on Game Pass. Yeah. Like, you can't... There's a... You can reach beyond the ceiling that Game Pass would have given you. Mm-hmm. But being on Game Pass gives you a, a, a nice, cushy fallback. Like, yes. like you're going to make this money no matter what anyway. Like... Um, so it's, it's hit or miss. It helps some people, it hurts some people. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, this is all also too, like, not just game pass, but like 
you know, Netflix and Hulu and Disney, yeah. like their streaming services are very opaque when it comes to like what's profitable, what is a hit, what isn't. You know, is this did this movie do well? We don't know. But and also, we will never know. Like Sony has their own streaming service, right? But theirs is a quagmire. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that. It's a little crazy for them to say that publishers don't like Game Pass. And also, we have our own version. Yeah. Like, I guess they're trying to say that they're going to do things differently, but what is the different thing? Yeah. You know? The different thing is it doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. We'll make it purposely confusing so people don't want it anymore. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next, Jim Ryan admits that Starfield uh, Xbox exclusivity is not anti competitive. Okay. While Ryan said he told Activision CEO Bobby Kotick he thinks Microsoft's acquisition attempt is anti-competitive, he admitted that Starfield's console exclusivity isn't anti-competitive, even if he doesn't personally like it. How does that make any sense? I, don't, I have no idea. I have no freaking idea. Like, I guess in, in a way, like, Starfield is not a, a known name like Call of Duty is. Yeah. Like, if they... Obviously, yeah, if they lost Call of Duty... It's gonna be a big deal, but like Starfield is an is a new IP. It's an untested property, so I, I guess they're thinking they're willing to take the risk of it not being on a Sony system if it doesn't do well. I, I guess there's two ways that I see it. One is that Bethesda games, largely Bethesda fans play those games on PC, yeah. so like that's Microsoft anyway. PlayStation's really not gonna benefit too much from that. Yeah. The other thing is that. Uh, this is Microsoft's one exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> like they Sony has so many exclusives. Mm -hmm. Like Sony's probably like you can have this one. <laughs> yeah. Uh and okay, last thing of day 3, experts argue over whether Call of Duty is a unicorn. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay. Microsoft and the FTC each called economic experts to the stand uh, today, but they had differing opinions on if Call of Duty is a unicorn. Uh, the FTC witness said Call of Duty is unique because of its annual release schedule, while Microsoft's witness said Call of Duty is not an essential must-have game. What? <laughs> I think in this case, like a unicorn, they mean like a special, unique game. That is important that like everybody plays. I mean, I, I, yeah, unicorn in that all of these publishers try to have their game be the one game that yeah. everybody plays multiplayer forever. Yeah. Like a Fortnite. Like mm -hmm. Fortnite's a unicorn. Yeah. You release a game, you don't know it's going to be this worldwide phenomenon. And every publisher tries to create that after that. And, 99% of the time, it's a miss. Yeah. And that 1%, you get Fortnite, you get Call of Duty, you get what else? Some other big, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah Apex or Valorant, Valorant you know, shit yeah. like that. Uh, those are unicorns. But uh, in what world are you going to argue that it's not an essential must have game? Well, you could argue that it's not an essential must have game because no game is they're video games you can go, go <laughs> okay around. yeah they're non-essential uh products at the same time too like you there are yeah there are other games to play and there are similar games to call of duty that you could play mm -hmm. that being said call of duty is annually top five best-selling games of the year yeah that's what so. i'm saying is that like you know Working at GameStop, when somebody would come... I mean, it's not the same as it used to be. Yeah. But when people would come in, that's the game you're buying. Yeah. If there's a new Call of Duty out, that's the game that that person's coming in for. Mm -hmm. We would have it right at the counter, like... Nine out of ten people walking into the store getting either Call yeah. of Duty or Madden. So, that's what I... That yeah. I would assume... I would call that essential. Yeah. You know, if, if, if a mom came in and was like, I'm buying an Xbox for my son, what should I get? I'd be like, Call, call of Duty. Duty. It's rated M. Do you care? And they'd usually be like, no. And I'd be like, all right, Call of Duty. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Day four. You ready? No. Okay. Let's go. Microsoft FTC trial. Activision CEO Bobby Kotick on Call of Duty exclusivity and other key takeaways. 
Bobby Kotick, known idiot, uh, <laughs> talked about why making Call of Duty on an Xbox exclusive isn't Activision isn't in Activision's best interest, and he admitted that he wasn't impressed by the Nintendo Switch prototype. <laughs> He also talked about future Call of Duty games potentially coming to Nintendo's next console. Hey, I uh, released a YouTube short today. I saw that, yeah. About how, uh, about how when the Switch launched, a majority of news outlets thought it was stupid. They thought it was meh. I remember, yeah. I remember that. And they're like, they had a lot of criticisms on a lot of things that now nobody gives a shit about. Yeah, so... I mean, yeah. When it come, when it first came out, it's like it's a little bit dated. The battery life kind of bad. The Joy Cons are weird. But Breath of the Wild is on it, so whatever. The biggest criticism was the battery life. Yeah. And the fact that it didn't have any games. Yeah. Uh, the battery life was is when it launched was three hours. Mm. Now I'm over here on a Steam Deck getting one hour, and nobody seems to think that that's a problem. Yeah. So we've given up. Yeah, on, I, battery life even on phones has gotten worse and worse, and yeah. nobody seems to give a shit yeah. anymore. Uh, here's what Kodak said about the Switch. Admitted, he admitted that when he first saw the prototypes for the Switch, he didn't think it was going to be popular. He also admitted that he was wrong, given that the Switch has now sold well over 100 million units. Kodak said that it was a mistake not to put Call of Duty on the current Nintendo Switch, uh, and he briefly spoke about how Activision will approach uh, future Nintendo consoles. We would consider it once we have the specs, but we don't have any present plans. Based on Codex comments, it seems Activision will heavily consider bringing Call of Duty back to Nintendo consoles once we get the detailed specifications of the next console. Okay. It's probably something we'll consider, he added. That's a good idea. Like, skip this one, and when the next one comes out, it'll be better hardware. We won't have to work so hard on porting things over. But by the same token, like there are Activision games on Switch already. Yeah. It's the Crash Bandicoot collection. It's Tony Hawk One and Two. It's the Spyro collection. Like they have a Switch dev, dev kit. They know how the thing works. Well, well, Overwatch is on Switch. I think what all the those, Diablo is on Switch. I think what all of those games have in common is that they were relatively easy for them to port. I think that Call of Duty is very poorly optimized, especially yeah. Warzone. Warzone is very poorly optimized. It runs pretty bad on a yeah. lot of machines. Um, so, I mean, it runs pretty good on Xbox Series and PlayStation 5, yeah. but on PCs, there's some weird stuff going on. I will note, um, the Arkham collection that's coming to Switch, mm -hmm. everyone was like afraid because like Arkham Knight famously was kind of shit on PC, and they're yeah. afraid the Switch was going to explode if it tries to run it. That collection is being developed by the people who ported Tony Hawk 1 and 2 to switch and right. that was a great port job so love a good port job they they have a they have a studio that knows how to work with switch just saying call of duty could have been on switch since the beginning it could have uh i i don't think he's that dumb for for holding call of duty i i've i've been wanting call of duty on switch forever i understand the trepidation yes but once it was blatantly obvious this this was gonna be a hit mm. like Fuck you doing, man. Cut because the Wii and Wii U was such a, uh, a, a, can I say failure for Call of Duty? Because they were not good versions of the games. No. No. No, well, no, they were not good versions, or no, I can't call them failures. And the DS. Like, all the Nintendo versions of Call of Duties were not well, good. Well, Black Ops 2 was on the Wii U at the same time as on the 360 and the PS3, and a lot of people thought that was the best version. Of Black Ops? Yeah. Why? Because it had... I'm eating another cupcake. I'll go for it. Because, you know, it, it ran just as well, if not better, because it had more RAM. I'm going to have a red one this time. Okay, I had a red one. You can have a blue one. I'll have the last blue one. It ran just as well, if not better, because it had more RAM. It had uh, gyro controls and motion controls. For it ran better because it had more RAM? Yeah, it had like two... The more Wii, RAM than what? The Wii U had two gigs of RAM with the 360, and the PS3 had 512. Really? Yeah. I don't know that. Yeah. I mean, no one bought it on the Wii U because it was a Wii U. But... <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Next. Uh, Warzone Mobile is coming in the fall, says Bobby Kodak. I'll read this so you can eat your cupcake. Thank you. The mobile version of Call of Duty Warzone is set for sometime this fall. Thank God I've been waiting for any news <laughs> on that because I've been waiting for that. Because I think it's Verdansk, which I miss. According to Kodak, 
we previously had a release window of 2023 so this narrowing things down a bit that's according to this article yeah that's good to know i i've been i've been every once in a while i pull it up on the android marketplace to see when if it's there because it just said 2023 it's they i thought it was any minute now yeah uh so fall makes sense that's good i, I want it yeah give me, give me that um this is interesting microsoft ceo if it were up to me i'd get rid of exclusives Microsoft CTO Satya Nadella explained that he has no love for console exclusives. He explained that Microsoft plays the exclusivity game to stay competitive with market leaders. I believe that. That's interesting that, you know, the head of Microsoft, not the head of Xbox, the head of Microsoft. It's just like, why do we, why are we doing this? Like, why can't we just put everything on everything? I believe that. Like, he isn't, you know in the you know he isn't directly in the video game right. world but he understands it and looking at a greater software uh, uh perspective it doesn't make sense to right. have exclusives especially when you have all of these studios yeah microsoft doesn't even make their money on hardware they yeah. make all of their money on software so he's looking at it like we don't even fucking sell computers like yeah. <laughs> like we everybody we're so rich and powerful because our software is on every computer. Yeah. So why can't we just put Halo on everything? Yeah. You know, that's what he and that makes sense. Yeah. So uh, Sony accidentally revealed that Call of Duty is worth eight hundred million dollars to PlayStation alone. A document from Sony's Jim Ryan has revealed that Call of Duty generated over eight hundred million in the U.S. alone for well, PlayStation's business in twenty twenty one. So almost a billion dollars just on Sony systems in that's, 2021. That's a good number for their argument. Yeah, that's good. That's good for them. Yeah, yeah to, to 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 be able to prove that. Mm -hmm. uh, and they need that revenue because Last of Us Two and Horizon Forbidden West budgets accidentally revealed in a poorly redacted document. Oh, God. That same document from Jim Ryan also revealed the budgets for The Last of Us Part Two and Horizon Forbidden West. Both games cost over $200 million to produce. That makes sense. Yeah. I mean, that's not entirely surprising because we know games are getting more and more expensive to make. Yeah. But by the same token, game studios are not forthcoming with how much money they're spending on these games. It's not like, you know, movie studios, they may not tell you, but like if you look up how much money they spend on movies... It's out there. Yeah. Like, it is readily available. Like, if you look up how much money they spent on The Flash, you will cry. It doesn't <laughs> look like they spent that much money on The Flash. But, like, you can find that out. It's there. They also, It's also over a longer period of time that they spend this money. True. Uh, and I'd imagine it's harder to quantify because it's over a longer period of time and there's a lot of a lot of moving parts you know, yeah. for, for, for games. Uh, okay. And last from day four... Microsoft considered buying Final Fantasy Maker Square Enix. We, what a twist. <laughs> oh, actually, we always thought this was Sony. Yeah. That was going to do Well, this. we've learned, uh, according, to, according to the article, we learned that Microsoft considered acquiring companies like Zenga and Sega. But now we, can add, crazy. now we can add Square Enix to the list. In a document from 2019, Xbox argued acquiring Square Enix could boost Game Pass subscriptions and improve Xbox's presence in Asian markets. Could you imagine if if Microsoft bought Sega after the Dreamcast? I mean, that was like everyone thought they were just going to do that. That would have been yeah. crazy. So it's not in this article, but I do have a list of companies because it wasn't just Activision and it wasn't just Square. Like Microsoft, like seriously considered buying a lot of companies, mm. including oh god, uh, Thunderful. Super Giant Games. Th th not Thunderful is the publisher of like Curse to Golf and yeah. some other indie stuff. Yeah. Super Giant Games, uh, Hades. Yes, um, that's crazy. Bastion, Niantic, Pokemon Go. Yes. Uh, Playrix. I don't know who that is. Uh, I don't. It sounds familiar. Uh, Zenga. Okay. Bungie. They thought about buying Bungie back, which they should have. Yeah. Uh, hold on. They should have uh, fought hard for that one. So Bungie, uh, IO Interactive, the Hitman makers, okay. uh, and Scopely. I don't know who that is. I don't know either. Uh, other developers of note include Behavior Interactive, Housemark, which was acquired by Sony, uh, Remedy Entertainment, Larian Studios, Rebellion Developments, and Paradox Interactive. 
Okay. And apparently they got particularly close to buying Sega. Like <laughs> Phil Spencer sent an email to Satya Nadella and uh, Microsoft CFO Amy Hood about possibly acquiring Sega and putting and like having their library on Game Pass. Can we find out how much Sega is worth? I'm sure you can. I think they said three billion, three point six billion dollar market cap. Is that what they're worth? I think so. That one, does market cap mean what they're yeah, worth? Yeah, more or less. That's not a lot. Uh, according to the email, as Sega Gaming Studios are owned by Sega Sammy, a publicly traded company, we have called out a few complexities in the memo. Sega's gaming has represented roughly half of Sega Sammy's revenue and operating income, or roughly $1 billion of revenue and $60 to $90 million of operating income in each of Sega Sammy's last three fiscal years. What's uh, the Sammy part? Sammy was another company that like merged with Sega. Okay. Then they became Sega Sammy. Like that's the overall parent company. Honestly, I think if they're spending seventy billion dollars on Activision, yeah, three point six for Sega is a steal. Yeah, because that also gives them Atlas, which yes. puts them in a great position in Japan. Yes, which they they have a poor position in Japan. Right but now. I feel like that could backfire massively. It could ruin Atlas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, where are we? Okay, so they were going to... Okay, now we're on day five. Okay, and this is the final day. Okay, yes. Uh, Phil Spencer seemingly decided to make all ZeniMax games exclusive in a 2021 meeting. Whoa. Uh, Phil, in the biggest bombshell of the day, we learned of a November 2021 meeting where Xbox head Phil Spencer apparently decided to make all upcoming ZeniMax Bethesda Studios Xbox exclusive. That is crazy. That's that's also incredibly damning. Yeah, for, for Microsoft. Yeah, and that real that like really speaks to like what Pete Hines was getting at. Is like, why are we Xbox exclusive? Why are you making a special deal for this this new chick who's coming on? Yeah, when we've we've been with you for a while. It's that like that's nuts. That like you have a studio that has had for years been multi platform and like. You've let them keep putting out games on multi-platform on PlayStation for like the first year or so. And then all of a sudden you're just like, you know what? No, I want Indiana Jones. I want Starfield. Me, me, me. Yeah. Yeah. That that above like that and uh, the, uh, the PlayStation 6 thing. Like those are like your big arguments for why they should not buy Activision Blizzard. Yes. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm now seeing why this deal is being blocked. Yeah. Uh, in in other in certain areas yeah uh xbox claims worldwide regulators on board with activision blizzard merger but canada disagrees uh xbox has claimed that the worldwide regulators are on board with the pro proposed 6.8 uh, 68.7 billion dollar acquisition of activision blizzard but a canadian regulator wrote a letter to microsoft disputing those claims Ooh, excuse me i'm getting yeah, yeah i mean didn't didn't Europe the, the also U not like the it? UK said no. Yeah. So what what worldwide regulators are they even talking about? Everyone else. Okay. Like Japan approved it. Brazil approved it. Japan the approving C it's crazy. The CMA, the which is Europe. No wait. The CMA is UK. The EU approved it with I think asterisks. But yeah, people are approving it. Hmm. So there's got to be not, a lot of asterisks. They're not wrong, but by the same token. They're not entirely right because this is a controversial thing and other uh, governments have something to say about it. Right. All right. And lastly. <laughs> okay. The last thing. The FTC trial unmasks Xbox ambitions. Well, this is in an, an analyst piece. Uh, IGN In an IGN analyst piece, uh, Shannon Leo uh, explains how the FTC trial has unmasked Xbox to a degree that no major game company has faced and that it could change how the media and consumers scrutinize the video game industry going forward. Yeah, this is an unprecedented case because of what it reveals about the games industry. We've yeah. never seen anything that dives, th that breaks open the big console companies in such a way that is like, it feels dirty. Yeah. I mean, the games industry is 
cartoonishly secretive about a lot of its stuff. Yeah. Like they don't like telling you what they're working on. They don't like sharing behind the scenes info. They don't like, you know, going into their archives and like revealing like, you know, the history of how the games were made and like little secrets and things like that. But like for this, they had to, they had to like explain like how things work and like this, the inner going ons and like the deals that they, that get made and stuff. Yeah. So I think it's, yeah, it opened a lot of people's eyes. Yeah, I mean this this is it's also great for us to see the mm-hmm. inside of how these companies yeah. are working and 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 how they've been competing against each other because in recent years we've kind of always thought that they've kind of stopped uh being so aggressive towards one another. Yeah. They've kind of just accepted all of their places in in the in the industry. But this kind of forced sony to be extra competitive yeah um and now we're learning about all of the dirty things that they've all done yeah which is kind of really cool for us (laughs) to see now i saw a tweet before uh i'm not gonna be able to pull it up but i saw a tweet before oh wait yes i can pull it up let's see if i can uh find it it was it uh i don't want to misquote it so i want to find it okay so this person said don't know who needs to hear this, but if you work with data miners and or promote their, co- I'm I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of seeing similarities between us taking a peek behind the curtain of these companies and yeah. also data mining. Like if a demo comes out, I think they're talking about like Pikmin. Like yeah. the demo came out, and data miners found out more information about the game. Yeah, yeah. Don't know who needs to hear this, but if you work with data miners and or promote their content, it says to brands and publishers, you most likely don't respect NDAs or embargoes or general professional and legal guidelines. That's an insane thing to say, I think. Yeah, I feel like. I feel like there's that's a difference case. between yeah. an NDA yeah. and finding out something uh, that's not NDA. Like, yeah, like. Data mining, like you have, like it, that's different from like a leak, you know, because because they leaked it, they yeah. put the they put the demo so like out. Nintendo puts out the Pikmin demo, mm-hmm. like it's there, and if you're savvy enough, you can go in and see what else is there. Like that's not, you know, yeah, maybe you shouldn't be snooping your nose around, but that's not that's no harm no foul. That's different from like you getting your hand on like secret documents from within the company. Yeah, but like, if I got my hands on a secret uh, PlayStation document, yeah, I wouldn't want to say anything about it because that's probably illegal. Yeah, this is the government taking a secret Sony document, yeah, and putting it out there. What am I supposed to do? Yeah, not talk about it. <laughs> it's out there already. Yeah. You know, that's different than signing an NDA and yeah. and and. Uh, you know, I obviously wouldn't go against an end. I'm fucking legally bound. There's yeah. no legal binding here. The government said you can hear this. Yeah. You know, it's different. And same thing with data mines. Like, I mean, it's out there. They put yeah. it out there. All you have to do is t- all you have to do is fucking look at the code and you yeah. see it. It's 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 like right clicking and it doing inspect all on your freaking uh, d- uh, uh, the Chrome browser. Yeah. Anyway. My takeaway from the Activision Blizzard uh, Sony debacle, crazy. Yeah, I kind of understand why it would be bad for for Microsoft to 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 purchase this after all of these things. They they did a pretty bad job of uh, yeah. defending themselves. Mm-hmm. Um. Anyway, just, we don't know the verdict or anything. No, this is just the preliminary hearings. I mean. Okay. They could. They're. They are now going to take this information. They're going to review the case, and we'll see. Oh, why don't we talk about this? This seems tangential. Uh, Microsoft thinks PS Five Slim is coming this year. Yes. Um. That was. Yeah, that was in my notes. That was like the last tangential thing I had yeah. about this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Microsoft expects Sony Interactive Entertainment to launch a PS5 Slim console later this year. In documents published as part of its legal battle with the FTC, the company said it expects the new PS5 model to cost the same as the existing PS5 Digital Edition console, which is $100 less than the standard PS5. PlayStation. What? 
PlayStation likewise sells a less, less expensive digital edition for $399.99 and is expected to release a PS5 Slim later this year at the same reduced price point, Microsoft says. The Xbox maker also said it believes Sony is preparing to launch a PS5 Pro console. PlayStation, meanwhile, currently offers two different versions of the PS5, one with a Blu-ray player for physical media, standard, and one without, digital, and it is and it, and is anticipated to release further differentiated Pro and Slim models in the future. Last month, Sony announced the new PlayStation streaming portable device, Project Q. Um, so yeah, so Microsoft thinks, this is, this is just their theory, their speculation, but they believe that Sony is going to release a PlayStation 5 Slim model this year, yeah. this in the fall, and it's going to cost less than what the standard disc-based PlayStation 5 is currently. So, yeah, again, this is speculation from Microsoft because yeah. they have to prepare for what their competitors are doing. I think that's crazy. I think that's a crazy thing to think. Like, uh, uh, they just raised the price of the PlayStation 5. In some markets, in, yeah. In a lot of markets. Mm -hmm. Basically every market but ours. Yeah. Um, but, on the other hand, they could be trying to compete with the Xbox Series S. Yeah. Because that is very cheap. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. That seems... I mean, I think it's obvious Sony is going to want to release an iteration of the PlayStation yeah. 5 because they're having a hard time producing... I mean, they've kind of figured it out by now. But uh, the PlayStation 5 needs an iteration. It's ugly. It uh, it's got a lot of weird problems. You can't that, put a beer uh, stein on it. Right. Sure. Classic game room shout out. I guess you can't. <laughs> uh, fucking power delivery issues. It fucking yeah. turns itself off all the time. So, like... Uh, it would make a lot of sense to make a sleeker, uh, a newer model that might be easier to get parts for. Yeah. Um, I don't see it being cheaper, and I don't see a pro version coming out. Because, again, yeah. they're having a hard time getting the software to match the hardware. Yeah, the pro version to me see, does seem like a little bit far-fetched. Yeah. Because, like we said, it's it's very, like, these systems are very advanced for what they are. There was no, there's, there is no need to like do a refresh because they can pretty much do everything you want it to do. They do 8K. Nobody has an 8K TV. Yeah. So I, I think this is Microsoft preparing themselves for anything. Yeah. Because they're they 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 have to because they're yeah. they're the competitor. Um. This also says last year insider gaming sources claimed uh, Sony was planning to launch a new PlayStation Five model with a detachable disc drive around September 2023. That we heard about. Yes, that was rumored. That yeah. was rumored along with the Project Q. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. That yeah. is possible. That could be, you know, that could be the mid console iteration that maybe is cheaper. Yeah. Uh. That is the sleeker one that we're talking about. Yes. It's just, it's cheaper because it doesn't have the disk drive and you buy the disk drive separately. That might actually make a lot of sense. Yeah. So forget what we said before about a cheaper one. That it, it, They could be making a cheaper one. Yeah. It would just, it's just, you buy the disk drive separately. Mm -hmm. And it'll have the ugly aesthetic, the disk drive. The disk drive will definitely be ugly. I'm hoping the console is a basic shape. It's just a... A rectangle. Uh, please, for the love of God, give me a rectangle. Yeah. I've never wanted a rectangle more in my life. Or rhombus. Or, we'll settle for know, a rhombus. I'll settle for a trapezoid. Yeah. Rhombus. Yeah, that was PS. Uh, PS Four. Four was yeah. a rhombus. Yeah. I'll take a. I'll take a rhombus. I'll take a rhombus. I'll take a trapezoid. Yeah. I'll take a, a square or a rectangle. No cubes. We've had cubes. Cubes. Yeah. Yeah. Cubes, a little... Cube, cubes are beloved, but they don't sell. Yeah, they don't sell. Um. I don't want fins. No. Get the fins no. out of my life. Fins only belong on the Batmobile. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, fins only... It, if it's it's got to go fast. Yeah. And it's not moving. It's stationary. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, that's it. That's it. Uh, Nintendo Direct happened a while ago by now. Yes. Do you want to... I talked about it already on the Nintendo podcast. Okay. Anything here that you're interested in? You already talked about... Um, uh, Batman. Yes. Uh, a little late for Batman. It is very late for Batman. It is about f 
five years late for Batman. Yeah. Uh, still going to fucking get it, of course. <laughs> Why? I, I've been wanting to play those games again, okay. and now I can play them on the toilet. Uh, then now you can tell me how they are, because yes. I don't think they're going to run that good. Uh, I mean, I mean the, the company that's porting them has done I a think good job Arkham, I think Arkham City and Arkham Asylum are going to run fine. I think Arkham Knight might be spotty. Yeah, I I can see that. Apparently, the physical version is just going to have Arkham Asylum on the cart in yes. City and Asylum. You have to download. That is crazy. Well, that's every collection yeah. now. Um, I think I the more I saw of Sonic Superstars, the more I'm excited for it. I know it's like you know tread lightly, but I do think it's good. I do like the idea behind it. Yeah, I'm still very skeptical. Yeah, which, especially how the multiplayer works. Which is fair. Like I get it. I do see how like you can run through other characters rather than bounce off like you do in New Super Mario Brothers. That's good. Which I like because that sucks. In New I Super just Mario need Bros. to know what happens if if you go go away from each other. Yeah. Because that's going to happen a lot. It's a Sonic game. Yeah. Uh, f- what else is there? I did think it was. Co- I'm not going to play it, but I did think the reveal of Mario RPG was cool. I will play that because I yeah. wanted to play it. Uh, that that does look cool. Uh. F- I think it's cool we're getting Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear Solid. The yes, collection. the collection. Uh, and, and it says Volume 1. Yes. So, yes. that's good. Yes. Uh, f- Super Mario Brothers Wonder, obviously. Mm-hmm. That game looks incredible. Yes. I like to think that, you know, Sega released Sonic Superstars and Nintendo's like, quick, do something. <laughs> um, but th- at the same token, like all the games I'm excited for are games I've played before. Yeah. You know, I played 2D Mario before. I played 2D Sonic before. I played the Arkham games ad nauseum. You know, like that. This is what I'm talking about. Like, we are in this holding pattern where the biggest games coming out are remakes or collections. What do you think of Penny's Big Breakaway? That is made by the team behind Sonic Mania. I mean, that does look cool, but like that didn't grab my attention the way all the other games did. Right. You know, I will definitely check out Penny's Big Breakaway. But the, the reason it didn't grab my attention is because it's a Sonic game without Sonic. Yeah. And I need Sonic. Exactly. Because he's cool yeah. looking. Um, yeah, I mean, that's really all my takeaways. There's a Peach game. There is a Peach we game. We don't know what it is. Just that it's a new Peach game. Detective Pikachu, which looks like they started development nine years ago. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and that's really... Oh, Myth Force. Remember that? Did you yeah. see that? That, that yeah. looked cool. It that looks did, like that a, look fun. an yeah. old Hanna-Barbera cartoon. That looks pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Uh, I thought it was a great direct. It was a very good direct. Some people didn't think that. No. But of course they didn't. Uh, it's going to be back and forth. Some people thought that Charles Martinet might not be playing Mario. Mario Wonder. So here's what I think. Here's my theory. Yeah. I think that he did a lot of voice lines like a couple of years ago. Yeah. And they're just pulling... Yeah. I should have asked him because I saw him after uh, after this. Oh, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't say anything. Yeah, no, but I was I was say? this close yeah. to Charles Martin. I could have been like, "Hey, did you do the voice?" Yeah, I think because he doesn't sound like he did in '96. You know, he's he's obviously gotten older. Yeah, so his Mario voice has changed. That's why I think Nintendo was like, "Hey, Charles Martin, come down to Japan. We'll." pay you for a couple days we're gonna make you say a bunch of shit yeah and they just did that that's what i think they did yeah i mean it's very possible that you know they're using old recordings it's possible they could have like digitized his voice somewhat because like i said he's he's like 20 or 30 years older now so he's not gonna be able to hit the high the high notes like he used to yeah so i think nintendo is pretty uh bad to their voice actors that did that that's the wording I would use. I would. I think they really don't care about their voice actors. I that would not surprise me at all. Like I don't think they're getting paid that much. Also, I kind of, I kind of don't like the voice acting in Breath and in, in uh, Tears of the Kingdom. I think it's pretty bad. But Bob, it is a ten out of ten <laughs> game from every website under the sun. I, 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 there is nothing wrong with that game. Also, I want voice acting in my Nintendo games. For the love of God, I don't want to read. But it's not... I've I've heard better voice acting. <laughs> it's not great. It feels like they didn't have any direction. It feels like they were like, say this line, okay, yeah. we'll go to the next one. It feels like they didn't like... Yeah, It I just don't know. feels very flat. I think... <sighs> 
I mean, Zelda has never had voice acting before, other than Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. So they probably like didn't really know like what to do. Not that yeah. they didn't know what to do, but like they didn't. It just seemed, the performance just feels flat. Yeah. Well, what Nintendo series like is known for extensive voice acting? None. Exactly. Yeah. The one time they tried was Metroid Other M. Like everybody hated it. Yeah. So. Well. So. Fans don't think Charles Barnet did Mario. What do they right. think? They they think they might have gotten someone else, or they, he might have been replaced, uh, or you, it's AI. But AI would be weird. Yeah, but I I'm pretty sure it's just him. I think we're all just you know. Does Charles Barnet do Wario also? Because he's a new Wario game. Mario, yeah, he does Mario. He does Luigi? He does Wario? He does Waluigi? He does a couple of other characters. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we will hit a point when Martinet is not doing Mario anymore. Correct. All right. Um, so we, we went to too many games. Yes. And uh, Charles Martinet was there. Mm-hmm. Didn't say anything. Uh, David Hayter was also there. Yeah. Did not see him the whole time. I was very close to him. Could not see him because yeah. there was a lot of people around and stuff. I didn't see him the whole time. Would bought a copy of Metal Gear Solid 5 and was going to get him to sign it. And then I said, <laughs> he's not in that game. Oh. But I shouldn't have said anything. Yeah. I should have let him do it. Yeah. Oh, man. That, I'm glad you did because like, that's a sore spot. I know, but that would have been so funny. Just to see him. To, to yeah. make him. Yeah. I wonder if he would have signed it. It's a good question. <laughs> well, well, will he sign it as Kiefer Sutherland? <laughs> Maybe. Um. All right. Where do we go now? Okay. We're getting. We're, it's late. Let's, it's late. Well, let's pick some important ones. Okay. Again. Let's do the Game Boy Camp. Oh no! Wait. In order, right here, we have this shareholder. I want to hear about the shareholders meeting. That's okay. Tune fan that derailed everything. Uh, okay. Nintendo shareholders meeting disrupted by a ranting Splatoon fan. Nintendo's annual shareholder meeting was reportedly disrupted by a fan who purchased shares specifically to rant at the company's president about Splatoon Three. As first reported by Twitter user N Styles, who attended the event, the meeting's Q&A sessions included some someone loudly ranting about female characters' perceived preferential uh, preferential treatment in the third game when it comes to customization options. Reportedly, the fan was unhappy with the number of customization options available to male characters in Splatoon 3, including hairstyle and emotes, compared to those available to female characters. According to N Styles, the rants continued for some time, causing Nintendo president Shintaro Furukawa to interrupt the fan and tell him that his question was too long. This was reportedly ignored, and the fan's rant continued. Mm-hmm. Eventually, he was stopped, and Furukawa rep- uh, reportedly replied, Thank you for your interest in playing our game. We appreciate your valued opinion. Following the event... That's it. That's all he got. <laughs> following the event, Twitter user uh, Hari... K- Har- Harui Katako. Harui, Harui Katako uh, identified themselves as the person who quest- who asked the question. According to the user, they specifically bought 512,000 yen or $3,570 in Nintendo shares so that they could attend the shareholders meeting and share their complaint. They then shared photos of the numerous letters they had sent to Nintendo about the topic previously, claiming that they got no response and so decided to buy shares in a company to get a chance to raise the issue directly. According to the user, they even bought and resold items such as Nintendo Switch OLED console in order to raise funds for shares, despite their parents telling them not to get involved. Oh my god. (laughs) What this is telling me is that we need uh, to... Buy a bunch of shares in, in Nintendo. What this is telling me is that people who hate women will go to great lengths to yell and rant to a company about. Wait, no, they don't. Yeah, no, because the problem is that all the women get the cool customization uh, options, but the men don't. I thought this is about how there weren't enough female uh, uh, customization options. No, the women get all the customization options. The men get squat. Compared to those available to, f- oh wow, yeah, wow. I I thought it, I thought he was doing the opposite. Nope. Wow. Okay. Like I don't I hate things, but I don't hate anything enough to spend three thousand dollars of my own money. Uh, I would. I would complain about 
beard options. Yeah. I want beard options in my when I'm making a custom character, all the beard options are bad. Yeah. You don't look like but I don't, mean, I don't mean take it away from yeah. other people, you know? Just they don't, they don't the look beard like options. beards. They look like, you know, paper over somebody's face. Yeah, and then they'll, it'll be like a mustache and a goatee, but yeah. not the full thing, you know? So. Or it's like five o'clock shadow or a beard down to your nipples yeah. and not like an in-between, you know? Anyway. Uh... That's it. Yeah. Oh, there was one. Uh, echo, this incident echoes similar, though seemingly less intense, than a moment in the last year's shareholders meeting when a Nintendo shareholder took the opportunity to ask Nintendo to release a new F Zero game. What if we could ask Nintendo for something in a shareholders meeting? What would what would we say? Uh, why has Mother Three not come to the United States? <laughs> I think that's the big one. Okay. That's reasonable. I think that's, you know, yeah, that's the reasonable one. The unreasonable we one. We need an unhinged question. Yeah. We got a 2D Mario game, so. We did get a 2D Mario good. game. Uh, it would probably involve, like, Prime 4. True. How, what's the status on Prime 4? Yeah. That, uh, they'll probably have a diplomatic answer. They, yeah, that, that's the thing with Nintendo. They have diplomatic answers for everything. True. So, you have to go, like, think, even this like he was like thank you for your interest in our game. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's the problem. Like we we could ask wh why Mother 3 was not released in, in the West and like do you have plans and they'll they'll just say we have no plans and they'll just say like well we didn't think the US would like it. But with, you know, even regarding the release of Earthbound and Earthbound Beginnings. Okay. Uh real quick, I want to talk about this Game Boy camera mod. Okay. This is by the Twitter user Game Boy Camera. 25 years ago this month, the Game Boy Camera arrived in the United States and Europe. Now a modder has made the chonky uh, 118 by 112 pixel grayscale digital imager fully fit inside a standard Game Boy cartridge, and it's so damn clean. It's really cool. Uh, Christopher Graves is calling their creation the Game Boy Camera Mini, and here's some video of it in action. It's really freaking cool. Uh, as a refresher, the original Game Boy camera was an absolute unit. Uh, here is how far we've come in a single image. Do you have the image up? Uh, what? Oh, that yes. one, yeah. Uh, yeah. While you can't swivel this one around to catch your selfies, That's it's useless. It does still have a hidden notch for compatibility with the original 1989 Game Boy and a built-in switch to be compatible. Uh, sorry. Uh, and a built-in switch to change between the original Game Boy camera software and a custom ROM of your choice. Interesting. Yeah. So this person also may... They've done a lot of really cool Game Boy camera mods. Yeah. Uh, on screen right now is a different one that's like... It looks like a point-and-shoot camera. Um, they've been doing a lot of work on this stuff. I want one of these so bad. But uh, they haven't really released stuff to, yeah. to, to, to the public. I, I think that they released uh, s this on GitHub. Um, but you click on it and it's a 404 error. Right. So I don't think... Graves already offers files for smaller Game Boy camera shells, though not this small at their Ko-fi page. Okay. Maybe I need to look into this some more. Uh, apparently, uh, they're using an iPhone lens instead of the lens from the actual game boy camera interesting i still have the lens adapter uh that i haven't messed around with because yeah. it took me a while to get another game boy camera because the one one of the ones i had had a faulty sensor okay uh do we need to talk about anything else uh i mean real quick we can just say uh microsoft is raising the price of series x and game pass in some regions uh, Game Pass, the price of Game Pass will go up in the United States by, I think, a, a dollar or two. Okay. Uh, so that's important to know. Where, did, where was that? It's somewhere in this article. Uh, Microsoft is increasing the price of the Xbox Series X in most countries in August, apart from the U.S., Japan, Chile, Brazil, and Colombia. Uh, it is also increasing the monthly price for Game Pass and Game Pass Ultimate for the first time, um, and which will see the base Game Pass subscription console move up. It will see the base Game Pass subscription for console 
move up to $10.99 a month rather than $9.99. Uh, and starting this month, July 6th, Game Pass Ultimate will now cost $16.99. And base Game Pass, like we said, will cost $10.99. Uh, Microsoft is not changing PC Game Pass pricing. Okay, so, that's so, good. Yeah. Yeah, everything is getting too expensive. Now. Yeah. Uh, Xbox Series X is moving up in price in the UK. Uh, most European markets in Canada and Australia. Uh, the Series S, however, will not be will not be getting a price increase in any market. Okay. So it's just the Series X that is getting more expensive. Real quick, I want to hear about Metal Gear Solid 4 coming to other systems. So, I mean, basically what happened was... Uh, Someone looked at the code for the the uh, the Metal Gear Solid Master Collection oh, on the, the website. website. The website, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And they found, uh, here, the new Metal Gear Solid website added buttons to the timeline for the games in the Master Collection Volume 1. But if you inspect the page, there are placeholder buttons for MGS4, Peace Walker, and MGS5 as well. While this is hardly conclusive of anything, there's some additional context for why this is suspicious. Basically, it's implying that there is going to be a Master Collection 2 and that MGS 4 and 5 and Peace Walker are going to be a part of it. Okay. Uh, I, I do remember seeing this now. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, Peace Walker is going to be a part of it. That just makes sense. They already yeah. did it. They was already yeah. part of the last collection. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 4 is going to take a lot of work. It is going to take a lot of work. I mean, we talked about this a few weeks ago. It They had a prototype of it running on P Xbox. Mm -hmm. So that is possible. But they didn't put it on Xbox because they didn't want to put it on more than one disc. Right. Um, and also, too, there's a lot of, like, exclusive references to playing on a PlayStation 3. So they have to take all of those out. But they've got to take those out of Metal Gear Solid 1 because there's a lot of references to playing on a PlayStation. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That'll be interesting to see. Yeah. Okay. That's it, right? That's it. Uh, all right. Yeah, that's all the important stuff. Unless Blooper Team doesn't want to make horror games anymore. The only thing they're known for making... <laughs> Uh, Red Dead Redemption 1 might finally be coming to PC because there was a leak on the South Korean ratings board. And the studio that made Lord of the Rings Gollum ain't making games anymore. What are they going to do instead? They're just going to focus on Lord of the Rings publishing. Okay. So there you go. Good. Uh, do this. Word of the week! Word of the week! Word of the week! I do a little dance whenever you do that. And then I realize that the screen comes up and nobody sees my stupid dance. <laughs> this is by... AK Family Home. Uh, they tweeted, Oh, come on. I just wanted to play some Zelda. And it's a picture of their Switch Lite that says, You have exceeded the daily rate limit of launching <laughs> software. Please try again. This is in reference to how Twitter now has a limit of yeah. what you can view. It was 600, then it went up to 800, then it went up to a thousand. I don't really know exactly what the rate limit is. The last I saw was 600 for if you're not subscribed to Twitter Blow. I hit the rate limit yesterday. Really? Uh, because the, yesterday they relaunched TweetDeck. Yeah. And the only reason I started using the new TweetDeck is because they the old one stopped working. Uh, notifications wouldn't load. Right. Uh, so TweetDeck was useless to me. And I use TweetDeck. I leave it on my screen all day and I watch the feed go up. Yeah. Uh, it's great. So I got the new TweetDeck, which sucks. Like, it visually looks a lot better, but... Uh, there's a lot of things wrong that don't work the way yeah. I would like. Um, you can't have multiple accounts, which is uh, most of the reason people even use TweetDeck is yeah. for multiple. It's to it's to monitor multiple accounts. And I had it on for like an hour, and I hit my rate limit. Wow. Yeah. So I just couldn't use Twitter yesterday, and I use Twitter so much. Today I was like, I'm like afraid to use it. Yeah. So congrats, you made me not want to use twitter anymore that's incredible that like you buy a company saying i'm going to turn this thing around and you're actively telling people not to use your it's platform. crazy i don't see how it could be any worse i'm sure it could get worse i said the other day on stream i think our mother would do a better job running, running Twitter, <laughs> not because she's incompetent but because she doesn't know about twitter yeah but she would still be able to tell that these are bad decisions yeah. you know so, also, she would like go after Elon Musk with a wooden spoon. Yeah, she'd beat the yeah. shit up, whip people into shape. Um, 
so yeah, I, I I don't know what to do. I I I have nowhere now. I have no even Reddit's fucked up. Now. I, that baffles me that like Reddit, like everybody's protesting Reddit, but Reddit basically is like stuck to their guns, and everyone just gave up. You know, I don't know. I mean, a lot of a lot of Reddit gave up, but it's not the same. It when still I, sucks. Yeah, when I go to Reddit, it's just pictures of John Oliver. Mm -hmm. Like people are still kind of protesting. Um, I have nowhere. I have no, f and a lot of the subreddits closed indefinitely. Yeah, so I'm losing all of my. Uh, you know, feeds. Yeah. Like I have no feed of, inf of 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 news anymore. The internet sucks now. It's crazy. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm gonna and people are getting like Mastodon and Blue Sky and stuff. And Mastodon I sucks. I'm gonna say it again. Mastodon wanna, sucks. So what have you have you gotten it? Have you? I've, used I've it? gotten. I was like, I got it like a long time ago. Okay. And like, I, I don't know how it works. I don't know how to follow anybody. I don't <laughs> know like, you know, how to change servers and like look for other interesting things. You know, it just, I don't like it. I don't understand it. And I don't like what I don't understand. <laughs> I don't want to do any of that stuff because I don't think any of them are going to be able to. Compete. Yeah. Like I did it for a while. Like I got Hive. I stopped using Hive because it like was buggy and like, about Hive. that was probably the closest to what I was looking for, but like not a lot of people were on it. It wasn't giving me the same experience. You know, blue sky is probably going to be the same thing at this point. Like we've been on Twitter for how many years now? You're we're based. You're basically asking us to learn how to ride the bike again. Yeah, like that. How are we going to be able to do that? The only one that I can see doing having any weight is Instagram Threads, because yeah, we already have Instagram. We already have Instagram, and they've found ways to brute force their TikTok knockoff and their Snapchat knockoff. The Snapchat one is the is the most egregious because yeah. Snapchat was perfectly fine and then instagram was like no we have snapchat yeah. and that fucked up snapchat it's still snapchat's still very popular though it's still popular among the kids yeah uh so but it's not picks. as big as it could have been yeah because instagram successfully ripped it off yeah um i th so i think that they have i th i think elon is handing twitter over to, to facebook, facebook yeah. right now the only thing the reservations I have about that is that um, I think the audiences feel different. Like on Twitter, I yeah. feel like I can just do whatever I want. On Instagram, it's like, yeah, you know, people I know from college are I know, there, yeah, and it's like, like and mom and dad, mom and dad, are watching. It feels a lot weirder. Yeah. Um. So I don't know how that's gonna work, but yeah. otherwise, I mean, that might turn into my new feed of information. Yeah, I, I, hopefully they have something that feels more like TweetDeck, where I have a constant feed. Hopefully they let me see things chronological because I know Instagram's weird about that. Yeah. Um. So I don't know. My Instagram is different from my wife's Instagram. Was that like mean? the app? Oh, yeah. The they, way the app is, they roll out new updates in a weird way. Like my wife can see videos in like messaging like preview it i can't she can get like a timeline of just who she follows i can't like i don't know what i'm missing or who i pissed off to not get these features but i want these features yeah there's uh yeah they, they roll out updates in a weird way yeah. I, I, that that's happened for for a while um yeah i don't know how i'm gonna view my information from from yeah now on i'm i i'm upset about t twitter because it was my favorite social media site yeah uh but literally i'm being forced off of it because i can't look at it anymore yeah. among other just brain dead changes that that are yeah. that are happening anyway um all right we'll talk to you people real quick sorry with people who left comments on Last week, and by last week, I mean two weeks ago's Wolfden Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. George McFarlane says, I don't disagree that Mario Plus Rabbids did good because it was the only Mario game on the Switch for a time. But you have to also remember that for years it was on sale for like 15 to $20. And I'm sure that also played a role in how well it ended up selling. That's that's true. Yes. That, like, that was often the cheapest Mario game you could get. Yes, but it already did better before that. Like, like I'm that definitely helped. Yeah, but it was it was already a massive success. It was while it was sixty dollars. It was already a hit, and then the sales just like pushed yeah. it over the edge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, J Marrow twelve says Bob going on about how I got a hair in my mouth. 
Bob going on about how he'd know if there had been an outage was extra funny to me because I had a power outage at home just yesterday and my PS5 yelled at me this morning. I'm telling you, people make me feel fucking crazy about the <laughs> PS5 turning itself off yeah. and then you blaming me. Killack, so I was at I was at uh, too many games, mm-hmm. and I met Mystic Ryan, who is a PlayStation yeah, yeah. Uh, YouTuber, and we were talking about YouTube Shorts, and I was talking about how YouTube Shorts should be like a like if you would make it like a tweet or something, yeah. like that's what you should make into a short. Like I was saying, I made one about how everybody's gaslighting me about how the PlayStation Five turns itself off, and he goes, "It doesn't turn itself off," and I was like, "It turns <laughs> itself off." He's like, "No, you're turning it off." I was like, "Fuck you, Mystic Ryan." <laughs> Uh, Killack says, watching this after watching the direct, I bet you're happy, Bob. That new Mario looks wonderful. It does. I, I think we kind of, well, we had leaks. Yeah. Uh, but we kind of, the leak was, uh, Mario RPG and the new 2D Mario. We, we thought it was going to be a new Super Mario Brothers game. Like new Super Mario Brothers, we new Super Mario Brothers, you in that line. Yes. This is something di- similar, but different. It's a new ish art style. New animation. I think we were talking about how we thought it was going to be like New Super Mario Bros, but we were hoping for something drastically different. Yeah. And then we ended up getting something exactly. substantially yeah. different. Ani says, uh, if Xbox can make a handheld PC that uses Windows and does it well, I would be there. I think a lot of people would. I think that there's room for that. But it definitely seems like they're more interested in letting other people make it. Yeah, like they have been with their other... Yeah products but just just make the fucking ui good yeah. that's all that they need to do melon says so wait are our hallways just like really thick doorways i i can't support that because there are doorways in the hallways yeah so no we're not yeah i i think it doesn't work no 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 thank you more like it's an entryway. More like home tunnels. <laughs> you know? <laughs> okay. All right, we're in the chat real quick. Ghost of Gordy says, for Will's next appearance on the Nintendo podcast, should Bob and Wood trying to find questions Will doesn't know the answer to? Get points if they stumble. That could be interesting. I will say, like, you know, yeah, I, I know a lot of shit, and, like, I'll drop things, like, without people asking me but like being forced to answer a question like that changes things then that's pressure then my brain shuts down no i yeah uh, yeah trivia is hard yeah it's not easy i was playing i mean i'd be up for it but we were driving home from pennsylvania and uh hannah was like let's play a game and we were like (laughs) three hours into the drive yeah and we started playing heads up but obviously I'm driving, so I yeah. can't see her. So she's just she's just looking at it uh-huh. and describing it to me. And we did video games. And I thought it was very interesting the way she would like... Because she knows video games. Yeah. But like it's not like how we would. We would be like, uh, Bethesda's uh, second game. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, you know, we'd get into it. She was like, okay, it sounds like... Uh, 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 extra luigi uh guy and it's like super mario oh, bros you know yeah. like like she would like go with the words where we would like go for like the developer yeah, or like the, stuff the like detail. that so yeah, yeah. i thought it was very interesting to be like wait what <laughs> wait what? oh oblivion yeah <laughs> you know, like anyway um where am i bob what's your opinion on switch port of kid icarus oh uh sakurai was did a video where he's like Someone should put Kid Icarus on the Switch. Sakurai said that. Yeah, or something to that effect. Good for him. I I'm, I didn't like Kid Icarus Uprising, so probably still won't like it on the Switch. D- didn't play it. Wouldn't know. Uh, I mean, it might be better. Yeah. Uh, no good ideas. Says what? happened to that guy that would ask will about a bunch of comics each week i don't I know i hope he's okay yeah i hope so too did, did, Co- he, did he stop he, coming around when we started doing twitch i think so that would make sense yeah i mean he also stopped bugging me on twitter too which is good because i don't have time to read all the comic <laughs> books he has i think i didn't have time then and i definitely don't have time now. i just think he realized that you stopped reading comics <laughs> i think that's what i'm 
I'm reading, I'm doing better about reading stuff weekly, but I have a very small pull list weekly. Hmm. And like my backlog is fucked. <laughs> um, LKM Charity. That was his name. That was his name. How, did, how do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Is GTA 5 available on Nintendo Switch? No. No. It, that's another game. Should be. Don't another understand game. why. Yeah, that game yeah. has been ported to everything. My PS4 tells me I turned it off wrong all the time. PS4? Doesn't surprise me. If, you know, they're they're very similar in terms of like how they're made, like hardware and software wise. Yeah, the software is very similar. Yeah. yeah. I always have trouble like connecting to Wi-Fi on my PS4. Especially the PS4 if, has a horrible Wi-Fi. Especially card. if I I move it upstairs, it just like doesn't want to connect to the internet. It has a very bad Wi-Fi card. Yeah. Uh the later models have a better one, but you have the launch one, right? I have your launch one upstairs, but I have my slim model downstairs. And even that is like very bad. Oh. I don't know if there's a difference, but I remember that it had a very bad Wi-Fi yeah. card. The PlayStation 5 is a lot better now yeah. with, in terms of, of Wi-Fi, but it's still got some finicky weird issues. Uh, rewatched all the old Wolf Den lives within the last six months. Holy shit. Dude. Damn, bro. That's crazy. What's your favorite Wolf Den live era? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the Mario Oreos. Oh, we didn't talk about those. You could pre-order the Mario Oreos. Yeah, uh, my friend did. We they, have to. They came already. We have to. And it came them. with a little letter from Peach. Oh, wow. A letter from Peach? Yeah. <laughs> I want a letter from Peach. Um. All right. Uh, I guess that's it. Thanks for hanging out. Everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfton Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfton. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfton Podcast. So you can go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. But if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, uh, Spotify, and every other podcast service under the sun. But no matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Um, we completely forgot to thank any of our supporters here. Uh, <laughs> uh, where were we? Let's do all of them. B2450, yeah. thanks for the Prime. Razzle Jazzle, thanks for the 33 months. Uh, Cal Ember, thanks for the 100 bits. Garrison, thanks for the 10 months. Look, Mom, I'm on a podcast. Um. Got Swifty, thanks for the four months. Happy fourth, Wolfden Bros. Good to have you back this week. Thanks Thank you. for being here. Uh, T Bird, thanks for the eight months. And Luke Anton, thanks for the 41 months. I've been subbed longer than I've held a relationship because anything is longer than zero. Oh. Oh, that's sad. Thanks for that. thanks for committing to us. Yeah. Uh, is this podcast on Apple Podcasts? Yes. Yes. Sir? Uh, thanks for being here. We're going to raid Jackson. He raided me two days ago. So return the favor. Return the favor. Uh, go over there and say hello to Jackson. And we'll be seeing you later. I'll probably stream on Thursday. Not tomorrow. I got things to do. Okay. Thanks for being here on this 4th of July. Go blow something up. Yeah. Uh, America. Bye. Bye.